The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. The name of Jesus is enough. My faith has found a resting place. Not in any device, nor creed. Let us trust in the ever living one. His wounds for us will ever plead. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for us. You shall lay hands on the sick and all that you will say that in the name of Jesus. The name works. And whosoever confesses Jesus as Lord, that name, the Bible says that he will be saved. So God gave him a name that is above every name. That is above every name. That at the name of Jesus. See, what surprises me is this. Every knee should bow. Then the first one is that sometimes surprises me. In heaven. In heaven, no. On earth. Then under the earth. Every knee should bow. And this one, God himself declared it. We don't have to change it or alter it. It works. The name saves. The name saves. And then when we confess him as Lord, we bring so much glory to God the Father. Now, you see, God has given proof to Jesus as the Savior of the world. He has also given proof, apart from the testimony. Let's go to Acts chapter 17, verse 31. Acts 17, 31. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. The man he has what? Appointed. How will you know the man he has appointed? He has given proof of this. To everyone by raising him from the dead. That man he has appointed. God has given proof to everyone by raising that man from the dead. If you know any guru, if you know any religious leader, if you know anyone who is claiming any power, who died and rose again, give me the person's name. I'm waiting. <laughs> Give me the person's name. Lazarus. Ah, anyway. Some people say Lazarus. See, Lazarus, when he, was, he died and he was buried, on his tomb, they wrote, Lazarus, the friend of Jesus, twice dead. Oh, two times. Yeah, he died once, and luckily for him, Christ was around. He brought him back. I'm sure when he died again, Christ was gone. I don't think that you want to imagine this young man from name. There is no other. And God has given proof to the whole world by raising him from the dead. You see, we must believe this. Because everything that proved that Jesus is Lord is clear to every one of us. It's clear. This gospel must be preserved. Galatians 2 verse 4. Galatians 2 4. This matter arose because some false believers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus. And to make us, what? Slaves. Now, the big one, verse 5. We did not give in to them for a moment. So that the truth of the gospel must be preserved for you. We didn't give in. 
Even when Peter wanted to play hypocrisy, Paul gave it to him because he has to preserve the gospel. And we have to preserve the gospel. He said, for who? For you. They had to preserve the gospel for us. And we need to preserve the gospel for the succeeding generations. Number two, this gospel must be preached. Because it is the power of God that saves sinners from the claws of the enemy. You see, the devil is powerless in the face of the gospel. Um, I want two young men here, two in black t-shirt, and then one in any other color. I saw some people in yellow, uh, so I want one in yellow. Okay, please come. One in yellow. Come. Or any young man around. Yeah, please come, come off stage. Uh -huh, come, 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 come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you are here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are young men indeed. <laughs> Pull them under your armpit. What is this muffler? Your face towel. Oh, no, no. Is it big enough to tie on your head? Try. I want him to look a bit more something. <laughs> okay. I think that it is not too easy. Yeah, he's trying. Yeah. Um, can I have another one, another, another fellow who is not in any of these t-shirts? Okay, come, you come, come, come. You come. Come with a microphone. Yes. This one is a preacher. So stand where you are. And the one in yellow, for a moment, is Satan. And these two are unbelievers. He's very powerful. He's, they are under his claws. All because there is no preacher. Let this preacher Preach to these young people the gospel, simple gospel. And then invite them to receive Christ. And let's see what will happen. Now he preaches, he invites them. And then this one responds to the gospel. This one also responds to the gospel. And they leave him with that obi See, that is how come all of us have escaped from his kingdom. Now, the devil is powerless at the face of the gospel. This gospel must be preached. That is the only thing that can depopulate hell. When we keep quiet, then you hold them captive. But when we preach the gospel, you'll be left with nobody. Have I communicated? Okay, fine. This is the only Satan who has yellow, yellow t-shirt. <laughs> okay, so I will soon be ending. This gospel must be preached. What does it mean to preach? God told Paul, go and open your eyes and bring them into the kingdom of God. That is what it means to preach. To open the eyes and turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place 
among those who are being sanctified. This is Acts chapter 26, 17 and 18. What does it mean to preach? It's to lift him up. Lift him up. And John 12, 32 says that even I, I, when I'm lifted up, I will draw men unto myself. That is what it means to preach. Lift him up. Let us go out there and lift him up. Let us lift him up. Let us make God and Jesus popular again on the land. Lift him up. And he will draw all men unto himself. The gospel of the kingdom is the seed that gives birth to the church. Now, it has power like a ballistic missile. It does things wherever it is planted. You can read Colossians 1, 5, 6. And then let me take 6 and 7. The gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing through the whole world. Just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. Say the gospel does things amongst us. Once you plant it somewhere, it can also plant a church. So if you want to be planting churches, take the gospel serious. But Romans chapter 10 verse 14 says that. How then can they call on the one they have not believed? And how can they believe in the one to whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? We need to go there and preach. Let them hear and believe. Let them call on the name of the Lord. So they will be saved. But the gospel is not like pulling greens. It doesn't travel on the wind of wings. No. Someone has to carry it. And it is you. You have to respond to the call. To carry the gospel. Let us carry the gospel. Now in fact. Any church that really wants to grow. Should be evangelistic in nature. Let me just say this. These days we hear many churches talk about discipleship. Who are you going to disciple? When you don't go out and bring them. Who are you going to disciple? If you really want churches to grow, that church must be evangelistic in nature and in pursuit. Then when they come, then you disciple them. Otherwise, where are you going to get them? If you sit only by discipleship, disciple, disciple, yeah. the gospel must be preached. The gospel must be preached. And then when they come, you then disciple them. We must carry it from person to person, from community to community, from village to village, from town to town, from country to country, from continent to continent. The gospel must be preached. We must carry it along. Now, I want to end as, because I've seen that my time is almost up. Let us go out there and preach our gospel. Paul says, my gospel. And if we really want this church to spread, we must go out there and preach the gospel. Today, in the name of Jesus, I am praying for the one who will respond, that, Father, I will go. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? It's always the cry of the Godhead. There are so many sons, but he can't find anyone to send. I pray that it will be you. Then it will be me. May the Lord bless us so that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the ends of the world as a testimony. And then the Bible says the end will come. God bless us all.